created to be made. Me, 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 me. What's up, y'all? Welcome back. This is just a reminder that while we might get into some tea, some drama, this is not a tea channel. We're focused on real stories and real commentary. Now, let's get into this video. If you're a mama and you ain't got your baby and your girl and your yeah, listen. That mama. No! Don't stop talking about me. Listen. But it, I, I, I'm looking. Your grandma is the baby. Okay, that's a wrap. Both Chanel and Lexi Blow were called to come back for season three, and little did they know they were being set up. Jocelyn in production made it seem as if these two were coming back to manage, to help, and to be Jocelyn's left and right side, especially Chanel who had already won the cabaret and was promised a secured spot on the season. But did the rest of the cast even catch that memo, or did they just not care? First time viewers and the new cast were under the impression that Chanel and Lexi Blow were friends and when Chanel refused to comment on whether or not Lexi was talking mess about the new girls, it made it seem as if Chanel threw Lexi under the bus. And that's what I thought too, until I did some further investigation and I saw that maybe it wasn't just that Chanel threw her under the bus, maybe Chanel peeped that Lexi Blow was an undercover hater. Yes, I said an undercover hater. Lexi Blow has been one of the fans' favorites through seasons two and three, and rightfully so. She has many good qualities, but that doesn't mean that she can do no wrong. Lexi downed Chanel many times via social media, and what stood out to me the most was her mentioning that everyone knew that she was the real winner of season two. Then you want to give Chanel, the make her the winner of the $10,000? You knew everybody in the fucking world knows I'm the real motherfucking winner. Hey, Lexi went out. You give nobody that really went in there and worked their ass off exactly. that damn money. It should have been me. I was in confrontation Fuck with that. Me. I danced my fucking ass off. I look, I stepped on scene looking good every fucking time. And she also sat on live stream with a man who said Chanel has the body of a little boy. Knowing that Chanel was humiliated for her body during her big moment on season two. Chanel doesn't have the most appealing body type. Yeah, and that's the thing. Yeah. And even outside, even outside the most appealing body. She's she kind of like a she she shaped like a little boy a little. You came back. You came back. <laughs> raggedy. No I look was looking good. Like. <laughs> She remind me of myself when I look at her. <laughs> Chanel said in her confessional that part of the reason why she didn't feel like she threw Lexi under the bus was that she felt as if she didn't have to be loyal to someone who wasn't loyal to her. After paying attention to that comment and seeing how Lexi spoke of her after the season aired, it makes sense that Chanel probably could sense that energy that Lexi had surrounding her winning season too. Other than the things that she said on this live stream, I really don't have a problem with Lexi Blow. I think she was entertaining and I don't think that she was messy like a lot of the other girls. She didn't come off as if she needed camera time and she naturally was just one of the stars of the show. But it makes it seem as if you were hating on the fact that Chanel won the 10K when you're sitting around with a group of men talking about how you were the real winner and everyone knows. Because if everyone knows you should have won, then that should go without saying. And it's just lame to sit on live with a bunch of men discussing a woman's body, especially when you know that her body was talked about during her big moment that you said should have been yours. I mean, it's not like Lexi lied about anything when it comes to Chanel's character because Chanel did need to step up to the plate more, look the part of the boss that she was supposed to be the captain she should have stood up for herself a lot more regardless of the fact that she's a hippie she did come off weak she did come off lost so i completely get lexi's irritation with chanel and that's why i say even though these live streams happen after the fact given how lexi blow felt about chanel chanel could have peeped that a long time ago and all this questioning about whether or not Chanel is flip-floppy, a follower, is she loyal? Jocelyn is the one who said so herself out her own mouth that the cabaret is not about being loyal. Again, Chanel was made to seem like the main culprit on season three when this raggedy situation with the makeup artist happened. 
Amber claimed that Chanel is the reason why she got kicked off the cabaret, and Raven called Chanel Yummy 2.0. But if you pay attention to what was actually said, Amber overheard the conversation and went back telling all the other girls. Mm. Amber, Amber, Amber. At least Yummy said what she said in front of Jocelyn. Now, people are going to like who they like, but when it came to Chanel, people refused to give her her credit. And in the end, she was lied to about her place on season three and was strung along after the apple throwing incident because according to Lexi, Jocelyn told her and production not to pick Chanel for the final cabaret. No wonder she didn't go to the reunion. A lot of these girls overdo it while trying to make a name for themselves on reality TV. The picking, the extraness, the forced aggressive personality, making an issue of nothing over and over and over and over again. I call it the Natalie Nunn syndrome. <laughs> Amber Ali, aka Miss I Run the Cabaret, took that role for this season. A lot of Amber's antics were purely for the sake of reality TV, so much so that I don't even think we know who the real Amber is. Picking on Wet Wet, fighting, taking her wig off, was acting and performative. Misdirecting anger towards Chanel for what she herself did, performative. Acting appalled at Diamond saying the N-word after she already said it to your face multiple times prior? Performative. Acting like you have such an issue with Jocelyn when weeks before the reunion, you weren't allowing any Jocelyn slander. Performative. She's an actress, but she didn't do a good job. People like Amber because they didn't like Jocelyn. And Amber pretended to be the one who stood up to everybody. She gave people some buffoonery to watch. And in the end, a lot of people flocked to Amber out of sympathy for what happened with Ballistic. In the last episode, I mentioned how in season two, we got to see how Jocelyn behaved when she's not having to constantly argue with or about her man. A great deal of Jocelyn's reality TV show drama has to do with Stevie J. For the longest time, you couldn't say Jocelyn's name without mentioning Stevie J. And many people have compared how she treats the girls of the cabaret. How Jocelyn and Stevie carried on the lie about being married. Because, you know, a lot of these girls, you know, the way I see it with their management, mm -hmm. you know, management. the way I see it, it's like it's like a relationship. It's like a marriage, right? Mm -hmm. It's like they're married to each other. They have an understanding, mm -hmm. right? They just don't have that paper work where they sign on the dotted line. I don't think that her commentary here in this interview and how she and Stevie went about doing things is a coincidence. I don't know how different or similar Ballistic's relationship with Jocelyn is. However, looking over Jocelyn's history with men, it, it doesn't surprise me that she is okay with being with a man who allegedly puts his hands on women. Matter of fact, it doesn't surprise me that Ballistic behaved how he did at this reunion, given the way he spoke to Big Lex on season two's reunion and the way he stood up while talking to her as if he was about to square up on a man. We should have known that Zeus was not going to give us all of the footage that we needed, especially with the lawsuit involved. And season three's reunion is a telltale of what Jocelyn's cabaret has come to be. Regardless of Amber's antics and people's opinions of her, she didn't deserve what they were saying happened to her at the reunion. But what I'm also not surprised at is her dropping the lawsuit. One of the worst things you can do when people have rallied up behind you after you've been done wrong, when people are trying to support you in numbers, is tell them to mind their business after you have decided to backtrack on your legal actions. Amber is the only one out of all four girls in the lawsuit who has withdrawn, and many suspect that Amber quietly got paid off. But if that was the case, then what about the other three women, Lexi, Riri, and Henny? As of right now, they are still going strong with the lawsuit. Whatever the case may be, we may never know. Jocelyn Hernandez, one of reality TV's most controversial characters, coming from the streets of Ponce, Fort Lauderdale, Miami, strip club dancing through teen years and young adulthood, being saved by a man when it was really a trap all along, coming from parents who... One passed away from an overdose and the other having her own issues with alcohol to later having your own run-ins with substances, which may be a part of your issue now. Jocelyn has really come up out the mud 
deep off in the forest of Fort Lauderdale, but Miss Puerto Rican Princess, Jocelyn has single-handedly sabotaged herself on more than one occasion. And, uh, and regardless of her story, her antics today as a 35-year-old woman cannot be excused. The cabaret was such a good idea, but it started not to make sense. Fake or not, none of it lined up with what Jocelyn said it was supposed to be. And from season one to two to three, the heart of the show got lost. The girls that were there for Jocelyn, she just pushed them away, literally. She recruited what she thought was little Jocelyn's and treated them the same way she has been treated all these years. She took Diamond's Cabaret and made it into Jocelyn's Cabaret. I understand that a lot of shows have some setup scenes. A lot of shows have some kind of script. Everybody has to have some sort of storyline. But even if things are set up, what happens afterwards just flows naturally for the most part in most of these shows. And I get that you have to be entertaining. And we know that you have to be entertaining on these reality shows. But at what cost? Overall, when it comes to this show, this is going to be it for me. There's a few more things that I found, a few more things I could say. Now, I know I didn't give a rundown on my opinions on each girl individually. There's a few more things that I could say, a couple things I picked up on during my research. And I know some of y'all have some thoughts as well. And that is why I'm inviting you to join me for a final thoughts live stream on Jocelyn's Cabaret. I don't know if there will be a season four, but for me, this is the end of the cabaret. But this isn't the end of the real on reality TV. There's one girl who didn't let Jocelyn punk her down into submission, damn near took her man, and ran off with her own show, Big Lex the Flexer. Next episode, we have even more to get into with Big Lex from season two and her baddie collection, or what I like to call baddie deception. Thank y'all for tuning in. I hope to see y'all in the live stream. And don't forget to click over to episode three once it's out. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Every day I just want to love you. She tell you something, you be like, okay. I see you out with your friends. I know you like to eat noodles. She tell you something, you be like, okay.